Hello everybody and a big welcome to CDHTV Gameplay. Me and Pontus here as usual with Eisenhard. That's, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and Rhetoric. What's up? So today I'm actually playing Godo, the bandit warlord. It's not really my kind of deck, never really been a big fan of it, but I do really believe that you should play things that is outside of your comfort zone, and you should try to challenge yourself with things that you don't really know or are good at. So this is coming from a pilot that is not really into Godo, don't really know how to play Godo, but want to be good at playing Godo and be better at defeating Godo as well. So that's why I'm running with this, and I, I hope. I will be able to count to 11. So I'm playing Vohar. It's one of the 20 different Demir Iso Conceptor outlets. This one being pretty cheap, which is pretty good for the commander's boss. So it's just Demir, I think, Nas uh, and Scepter combos. Probably going to be a mirror match with Pontus slightly, except the outlet that I have is trying to, you know, getting something like Retraction Helix or uh, Banishing Knack and bounce it infinite times with her untap ability. Bushclaw Talisman is involved in that process as well. Yeah, I'm playing Blue Farm. It's uh, not typically what I play. I usually play my own decks, but I'm preparing for a tournament right now and I really want to play one of the best things that's available to me so I will play Blue Farm in the tournament. The list I'm playing is more of a mid-rangey control list just as Mon said very much out of outside of my comfort zone. And with that let's take a look at some opening hands. It can be a pretty explosive turn. We have Underground Sea as well as Mana Crypt, Dark Ritual, Demonic Tutor, Toxic Deluge. Oh man, you know what? I think that's going to be a snap keep because I can get her out really quickly and then start to ritual into things like Wish Claw Talisman and so forth. So let's go for it. So this hand is very medium. It's not a bad hand, just a bit awkward. Like my lands aren't live until. Wait, my lands are never live. This sucks. <laughs> go to second seven. Yeah, so this hand is. Better, even pretty good. So this is a turn one commander into a turn two necropotence. We're probably just putting away the LED here. So this hand looks pretty good. We have a turn one ancient tomb into arcane signet. After that, we can do Felwar Stone, City of Traitors, we have a Seeding Son, and we have a one red mana equip the Helm. So I think this is a snap keep. We're keeping it. First seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And Underground Sea, a Spire of Industry, Snap, Dress Down, Force of Negation, and a Ragavan. I will ship these because I can't cast the Ragavan. For Force of Negation, I would have to keep two cards. So that's too big of an investment. I would have to ditch a land. Final fortune doesn't make any sense here so i will keep this it's a super slow hand super bad i'm not happy i will keep spire underground sea and press down we will draw a card for turn underground sea mana crypts for rona i've got one floating like to cast mox amber a black cast dark ritual cast demonic tutor i have us pa cast uh witch call talisman tutor for a tutor yeah well good my turn buy of industry mana vault Cast a Demir Signet. I'll use that to cast my commander. So, War is a 1 2 has tap to draw a card and then discard a card. And if I discard a instant or sorcery that way, my opponents lose one life and game one life. Mox Amber. But with that in play, I'll pass the turn. I'm gonna play a Ancient Tomb, tap it, lose two life, to cast a Arcane Signet. I'm gonna tap that. To cast a Skirk Prospector. And then I pass the turn. Uh, an Underground Sea as my land for turn. Pass my turn after that. Put a Swamp into play. Tap Swamp. Tap. Wish Claw Talisman. I'll give it to Aizen. So I am going to get Shuffle Up, cast Retraction Helix, targeting Rona. With Retraction Helix, tap it to bounce a non-land permanent. So I can bounce Mox Amber to my hand. And then what I can do is recast Mox Amber, which untaps Rona, and then essentially repeat this process. I can tap this, float the mana, put it back in my hand, cast it, infinite blue and black, high amount, use Retraction Helix to steal back Wish Talk, Claw Talisman, recast it, and then find some kind of win condition, whether it's like Fast Oracle, something of that sort. Yeah, so that's a really cool combo, but I don't want you to do that right now. <laughs> He has a swan song. Underground C for a dispel. Okay, Mons, help me. I pass. <laughs> I am a mono red dude. I don't have my one of my two uh, red blast pyro blasts in my hand. Uh, can't do anything. I pass. With retraction helix, we'll steal wish claw talisman. Wish claw talisman. I will give it back to Aizen. Put this in my hand, and then with the infinite mana, cast walking blista, and once again blast. So uh, yeah, that was rather fast. Let's do a uh, game two. I think. Congrats, rhetoric. I want a rematch. Okay, hopefully we get to turn two this time, starting seven. Yeah, so this hand is pretty exciting. It's a bit awkward because we're gonna be presenting a way larger threat than we actually can 
like live up to. So this is a turn one, Dark Rit into Demonic Tutor into Imperial Seal. That's very good. And we already have the Rhystic Study in half, which is very nice. We also have the Time Twister, which is, I guess, fine once we've emptied our hand. Turn two Rhystic, which is pretty good, especially going first. Turn one would be better, but we can't accomplish that with this hand. And then after that, it's a turn three Nos, probably. I'm gonna keep this. Go ahead, Rhetoric. That's not good. We have one land that's colorless that's not really gonna help us out until later on. So, um, although we do have like the Amp Tutor and Tainted Pact, I still don't think it's worth it. You start. Force of Will and Fierce Guardianship, very interesting, as well as Spellseeker. So we might have like a couple ways of getting there still. Mana Crypts with Imperial Seal, we will see what we can find. I think there's some things like we can get to, we just will take a little bit more time, unlike last game. We have a Forbidden Orchard, a Vernon Catacombs, we have a Ragavan and an Esper Sentinel. So I have some very good early drops. I will probably cast the Esper Sentinel turn one. And I have a Chain of Vapor, which uh, will help to interact with um, Rona combo and also if necessary with um, Goto. I have a Professional Face Breaker, uh, something that can give me treasures and uh, so I can ramp more and I have a final fortune which is an optimal early in the game but at least uh, six and an extra card for later on so i'm pretty happy with that and i will keep this so i really want to keep this hand if just one of these cards were basically a mana crypt we could have absolutely kept it get that assault monolith into play turn one with the crypt and then we have a dock side and we're probably gonna get a very fed dock side here but there just is a chance that we're not gonna top take a land so there's a risk keeping this hand and we don't have a way to like solve that so we're definitely going to mulligan because i don't want to risk it too much we drew dock side again it's a sign i guess we are last in turn order. We're going up against some really non-green decks, so to say. That means rocks. So there's a chance that the dock side will produce a lot of potential mana here. We also have the Dwarven Ruins. That is a com making it double mana, so to say. We have Fury. So we kind of have some interaction. I actually think I'm going to keep the second seven. Believe in the dock side greed here. There, like there's an absolute chance our opponents just flooding the board with artifacts. We could go lower, but I think uh, dock side will be pretty good in this pod. So we're going to keep it. I think we could uh, potentially win the game with just a surprise dock side from nowhere. And with that, let's start the match. Take my turn. Land return will be a Scalding Tarn. Fetch. Finding this underground sea. Tap it to cast this Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual resolves. I will use two black to cast this Demonic Tutor. Finding this Mana Crypt to cast this Imperial Seal. This just screams winning next turn with Fasa's console. Uh, <laughs> I can guarantee that that's not what I'm going for. I don't believe you. It's uh, Fasa's Oracle and Tainted Pact, not console. I pass. <laughs> Imperial results. Putting this ad nauseum on top of my library. I'll cast this mana crypt and then I'll pass. We will start with a Marsh Flats. Crack it for one. I will also get an Underground Sea. Underground Sea and cast my own Imperial Seal. You guys. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm still going to get Mana Crypt on this just because I've got Spellseeker, I've got some other stuff. I mean, and I have stuff to stop if Pontus tutored for some pretty nasty things. So with Fierce Guardianship, Force of Will, or Metal of the Mixture, I mean, there's some ways to maybe find some stuff. I think it's still the best option. Put it on top. Draw Pontus to just tutor twice. Both are top decks. I was hoping for to be able to dash and Ragavan to steal one of the top deck tutors, but that's not happening. I could keep up the Chain or the Swan Song, so I would... Uh, um, just play land and pass but I think I will take the risk to let the blue players deal with each other and I will cast an Esper Sentinel to profit off of that and draw a few cards if I can. I will play this Forbidden Orchard, tap it, I will give the token to... Give it to me. They have they have black uh, sacrifice a creature uh, add mana rituals. I don't have that's, those. That's true. They have, they have that. So I will, I, will give you a, um, I will give you a token. You have a spirit and I will use the one mana. It will be white and I will cast an Esper Sentinel. Pass my turn. I'm gonna untap and draw a card. So our opponents did not flood the board state with artifacts. There are two. So Dockside currently makes two. I don't have a single interaction versus their heavy tutoring because their wing cons isn't something I can like interact with with the current hand that I have. However, it sounds like Pontus was not going for that combo, so I don't know exactly what he's doing. Regardless, I think we're just gonna put this land into play and progress really slowly. This is not going great because we kind of needed them to flood artifacts. 
But I still have a turn to put more rocks into place, so let's hope for the best uh, dockside turn 2 instead. I'm gonna put this land into play. I can sacrifice this land to get 2 red mana, but currently it comes into play tap. And then I pass the turn. Move to my turn. All this damage, I rolled a 6, so no damage. Draw for turn. Land for turn will be a mana confluence. I'll cast this Rhystic Study. You may draw. So that's what you tutored for, I guess. So with that in play, I will pass the turn. Alright, move to my turn. I did not tutor for this card. <laughs> And cast my commander. I will pay for the Rhystic with the mana floating. Pass turn. And draw for turn. I will play this Verdon Catacombs as my land for turn. I will tap the Forbidden Orchard and give uh, Mons another spirit token. I will use the red mana to cast Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. And I'm not paying for the Rhystic study. Pass my turn after that. Untap and draw a card! I'm gonna play this mountain and I'm gonna tap both of these lands, not sacrificing this because I think I'm gonna need it sticking around for a while. But I'm putting this, casting this dockside, not paying for any rhystic studies. You can draw a card, Pontus. No response, sadly. I will gain or treasures. I will sacrifice all of them. I'm gonna cast this Yaxis the Troublemaker. So this is a really amazing creature to get with something like a Dockside, because we can make copies of Dockside with this. So even if I'm putting this Dockside in play, really losing the effect, but I can gain it more and more over the turn. So this is a great development. Sadly, we're tapped out, but for the future, looks positive. Feed me more treasures, guys. No blocks, take two. And then I pass the turn. Good my turn. Untap, roll for crypt, all this damage. I rolled a three. So that's three damage. Then I will draw for turn. So this hand plays right into Mon's hand. I can cast Nos here. I don't really trust Eisenhurts being having one mana. It might be interaction. He's drawn, I think, two, three cards of Desper. And I have no backup, like at all. But the alternative play for me is to play four more artifacts into a Jaxx's Dockside on the board. And unless my opponents feed me with the Rhystic Study, we might just lose to Mons if I do that. So neither of those alternatives are that good. If I cast Nos here, the alternatives are either I win or I don't win. That the ability to win is really good. You li I like winning. You like winning as well, I assume. So I think that's what I'm doing. If the Nos gets countered, the Nos gets countered. Nothing much to do about that because i don't want to feed dockside and especially when it's mons i don't want to help mons come on land return is uh, this city of traitors it is indeed adnos mana you're correct eisenhurst uh, i'll have i'll have one flo floating post this nos espa sentinel trigger you may draw good sir i'll show you a fierce that sucks trigger stick i can't pick uh, and not counter i'll just pass take my turn spell seeker to retraction helix and then but we can't untap so that's the only thing. We've got to like do a couple different things to try to get a win condition. So maybe Meme Betrayal is where we go. Demir, I'm gonna cast Meme Betrayal. There is a uh, the Espa Sentinel trigger and the Rhystic Study trigger. You both may draw. I draw. All right, you, uh, I will draw as well. <laughs> Doom, 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 doom. Sounds reasonable. I will crack my bird catacombs. I will lose one. Ground C. I'll shuffle up in a second. I will tap the underground C to cast a swan song. I'm not paying for a stick study. Uh, lose life. And I will also pitch mold the mixture. I pass on fourth. Cast a force of will, pitching Lavinia, Azorus, L Renegade, losing a life. I'm not paying for Rhystic. Let's see. I'll tap Rona to draw a card, discard a card. And that's not the card we want. Yep, we're going to discard this card, which is March of uh, Wretched Sorrow. And that is countered, so well done. Yeah, but you see, I helped the cost by drawing out the counter spell from his hand before he tried to win, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he actually did. Valiant efforts. Pass turn. I will draw a card for turn. Kevin of Souls, name humans cast a mox diamond i'm not paying for rustic a ditch a misty rainforest pay three give mons another token and i would like to cast my small commander timna uh, there's a rustic study trigger pontus you have like what 200 cards in hand 12 yeah then now you have 13 because i'm not paying so i would like to move to combat if that's okay i will swing ragavan at uh, rhetoric and i would like to swing my Esper sentinel at pontus no blocks all right i will get a treasure from ragavan in rhetoric you flip your top card it's a land right sucks but whatever and i will pay two life so i'll go down to 36 and draw two cards these are my two cards play this mox opal pass my turn after that impressive guys i'm gonna draw a card for turn 
I'm gonna put this Inventor's Fair as a land drop into play. I'm gonna tap this, activate. Yaxis the Troublemaker. I need to discard a card. I'm going to discard this Manifold Key. I'm gonna target Dockside Extortionist. I wanna make a copy of Dockside. It resolves. I have a Dockside ETB, so I'm getting two from Pontus. One from Rhetoric and four, four from Ice and Hearts. So that's a grand total of seven. It's pretty good. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 10 man. <laughs> that is literally one off from winning the game right here and now. Because we need to pay six mana to Godo and then five mana to equip. And that's a total of 11. I don't have that. Well, we're still actually casting Godo. So we need to pay four mana into that. We could sacrifice this, but I'm going to keep it because we don't need to sacrifice right now. So Godo ETB. So I'm finding Hammer of Nasan. The reason is very simple. So I can't find, or I can find the Helm, but I can't equip the Helm. So there's no real point. Putting Helm into play is kind of risky because it, there's a chance people will try to destroy the Helm. Also, I still have Yaxis and I can target my own commander next turn. And then because of the Hammer, it will auto equip. So I will lose the token that, is, that I'm generating, but I'm still getting the Godo ETB effect, finding the he Helm of the Host, equipping it without paying the mana cost. So I literally have the win the next turn for only one red mana. Well, they could still destroy my creature here, but I think we're gonna be decently fine okay here. I'm equipping the hammer automatically, then I'm attacking at Rhetoric for five damage. All right, no response. I'll take five damage. And then I pass the turn. Roll the six, so no damage. In my upkeep still, tap a blue for a missile tutor. You may draw. Finding this dramatic reversal, putting it on top, and then move to draw. A2, so Mox Diamond, Mox Opal. I would like to cast the Brain Freeze, and I will pay for the Rhystic so you don't draw the cards. Is this copy also targeting me? Yes, everything targeting you. Op Agent and Grimonolith. And then I'll mill Force of Will, Mean Bet, and Rushing River. Then I would like to move to draw. Land Frame will be this for Bin Orchard. I have ATB trigger. I'll tap the traders in response, floating to colorless to cast this. Uh, mana Vault. Cast this Wish Claw Talisman. I'll tap this Mana Vault to activate Wish Claw, giving it to Mons. I have a Wish Claw. Finding this card. I'll use my two colors floating to cast this Arcane Signets. I give, I guess, Mons another spirits because it's fun to give the same person. I have an army. So use all my mana, except for Arcane Signets, to cast this Yagwell. Yagwell resolves. I will tap my Arcane Signets to cast a Dark Ritual from my graveyard. I'll use two of them. Cast this Demir Signets. Blue Black floating. I will casts this dramatic reversal from a graveyard. I will untap all my non-land permanents to cast this Grim Monolith. Cast Nas from my graveyard. I, I have nothing. I'm on a red. So Nas resolves. So zero, two, zero, two, two, one, zero, two. Yes. Two, two, one, two, zero, six, one. Hang on deeper. Two. I have a line. I'll stop there to cast this Fellow Stone. I'll tap Fellow Stone for blue. Two blue floating. Use the blue floating, cast the Shane of Vapor, targeting my mana cards. So in this scenario, Shane of Vapor is basically just a ritual because I can bounce, bounce the rock, sack a land, bounce the rock, sack a land, bounce the rock, sack a land, bounce the rock, and then recast the rocks. So that's how we ritual with Shane of Vapor. So bounce this mana crypt, sacrifice my mana confluence to target this mana vault, then sack this I'm gonna see, target this Feller Stone, then sacrifice this Fruin Orchard, target this Arcane Signets. Cast this mana crypt, tap it, float one colorless to cast my mana vault, to cast this Arcane Signets. I'll tap Arcane Signets uh, for a black, use the colorless and the black, cast this Cabal Ritual. I currently have uh, uh, nine cards in my graveyard, so it's I'd like to make fa five black. I'll use one black, one colorless, Cast this Fellow Stone. Tap this Fellow Stone for a blue. Use two blue to cast this Tassel Circle. Tassel Circle ETB on the stack. So ETB, I'll respond with the Tain Impact. So the Impact resolves. I will exile until I have one card left in the library. Uh, and then Tassel Circle will see that I, my devotion is more than one. And it will win me the game. Yeah, good game. I think Godo is a really good example of a commander that can really attempt win early in the game, but it struggles protecting and making sure you get the win, but also it really struggles with interaction. So it's a very risky deck that just feels out of place considering the speed out there is pretty faster or equal to Godo already. And those decks also have interaction. See, I'm not a very proficient blue farm player yet, but I'm learning and I will be in a few weeks. Every input is welcome and uh, I hope to see you guys uh, soon being a better blue farm player. So Rona did it for me a little bit and, you know, it's a fast Demir deck. I think I'll keep playing with it. I had a lot of fun today. Yeah, the double tutor letting us find both uh, Mana Crypt for the Rhystic in hand and the Adnos worked out in that. Rhystic is a busted memory card, so good game.